Okay, we got our new water pump on. Next thing we have to do is put our tensioner pulley and our idler pulley back on for the timing belt. Got our new pulleys back on. Our tensioner pulley, our idler pulley. Now it is time to put the belt back on. We're going to start down here on the crank first. Just going to fish this belt upward a little bit. Line up our mark here on the crank pulley. Slide that belt into place. That is pretty much it for down here. Now we'll go back up top and do the cam pulleys. All right, we got the boat around our cams. Sorry, I couldn't take you with me on the journey. It just was not no room on here to put you. But basically, you just wrap the belt around the tensioner here on this side or the idler pulley on the front, bring it around this front cam. You got to finagle the cams around a little bit to get them to line up. We put it on the front cam, bring it back around the water pump. And you need to put it um, around the back cam there. Put it where your marks are. Again, you're going to have to move the cam around a little bit to get it matched up perfect. And then after you do that, you're going to have to take out all your slack by turning the cam in a counterclockwise direction. Taking up all the slack from the crankshaft all the way up to the front cam around the water pump. And you have just enough slack to slide the belt back up over the tensioner pulley down there. And then once you do that, the belt's on. Now the next thing you want to do is go ahead and pull your pin out of the hydraulic tensioner. That's going to keep the tension on your belt. And what I'm going to do I'm going to put this washer back on the crankshaft, a big washer top thing that came off of it. Actually I'll probably put that back on there and um, I'm going to put this back on. It's kind of beveled. Put it on so it's, the edge is beveled, beveled out towards you. I'm going to go ahead and put my crank pulley back on temporarily. Rub my bolt back in there. Just hand tight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and start the truck let it run for just a second. Not long at all, just a second and make sure we don't have any problems. Alright, I'll just crank it up and run it a couple of seconds, maybe about five, seven, eight seconds. No problems. I think we're ready to go ahead and put this thing back together. Now the first thing I want to do is go ahead and put this back in the radiator. Well, if I do it now, I won't forget about it later. And after I get done with that, I'm going to take the crank pulley back off. 
then go back up and um, start putting the motor mount back on. Alright, we're ready to put this motor mount back on. course first is this part which goes on the motor that's why we took everything else out of the way and apparently it's a whole lot easier If you have all three stuck through the mount at the same time when you go to lay it in here that's tight On top of this mount, there's also a wire and harness. It's got a little 10 millimeter wire and harness bolts right to the top of that mount there. I'm going to put that back in right now. And that mount side of the mount is in. We'll go ahead and put in the side that comes on the frame over here. It's got three bolts that go in it. Two lower bolts. And one upper bolt that goes. Open all these fuse boxes and everything. Put this piece on, connects the two halves together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it where it goes, start these two 14 millimeters. down into the half that come off the engine block. Just gonna start them over. Put a bolt in here. If you notice this thing here on this bolt, it's got like a little nub coming off that end right there. But this thing goes in here just like that. This weight it in, be pointed toward, straight toward the motor. You can just kind of see where that nub lots against another nub. It's actually on the mount itself. It kind of keeps that weighted in from falling down. Tighten that one up. Now this is 17 millimeter. Oh. 
got each other to the rest of the way up. Now I have this little plate here that these wiring harnesses connect to. Let's have them pop up. Come out here with a 10 millimeter bolt. And it also has a little nut that kind of fits down in the hole here just to keep it from spinning around. Move some stuff out of the way. And then these. Wiring harnesses get snapped right back on there. Just like so. Now before I put the water uh, power steering pump back on, I'm going to go ahead and put my timing covers back on first. Just because there's just a little bit more room before I put that power steering pump back on. Put a little washer thing on again with the bevel coming back out toward us. Cover up in here. It is pretty important that you line it up exactly about where it goes. It's because of the fact that the timing belt, the serpentine belt, pulleys and such can rub on it and just tear it up. I've seen that a lot. one back on first I'm just gonna get that wire and harness it wraps around the top of it be sure to put that back five of the time and cover bolts. Put the four around the edge and one toward the bottom in a little recess. Okay, we got all the timing covers put back on. All we're gonna do is put the crank pulley back on. Slide it up on there. Bolt in. Tighten the crap out of it. I'm 
I'm gonna go ahead and put our power stirring pump back on. And it just lays down in here. Bolts right back into place. Two 12 millimeter bolts. Tensioner back on for the serpentine belt. Remember, at the 14 now that goes with the idler pulley. 14 there goes with the idler pulley. And a little coil back here holds it in place. Okay, we got the tensioner put back on. Now it's time to put the belt back on. All right, now that the belt is on, we'll go ahead and put the hopper steering reservoir back down in place. Hook the hose back up. Cover back on top of the engine. Cover back on. Put our front tire back on. Let it down off the jack stands. Fill it up with antifreeze.